What's up, YouTube? This your man, your boy, the cowboy, right here from me, Leather Crafters in the Dirty South, with another video. And this one is going out to Michael Mays Sr. Thanks, Mike, for your comments. Thank you for subscribing and thank you for coming and joining us and just listening to what we have to say and what we have to offer the leather crafting world out there. And I think one of your questions, and I'm hoping I'm getting this right, Michael Mays asked a question about airbrushing and how to use airbrushing in the craft and leather world. So, um, I do have an airbrush system that I didn't spend a whole bunch of money on. You guys already know if you've been following me on on YouTube, Instagram, uh, Facebook, all social media outlets, whatever have you. If you've been watching these videos, you already know that I am a fan of two primary companies where I get a lot of my supplies and things from. One of those companies is Harbor Freight. So if you're out and you're interested in trying to get into airbrushing and incorporating airbrushing into your leather craft, then Harbor Freight is a go-to spot for leather crafters. One, because you can buy a lot of the supplies that you may that you probably use, and two, is economically reasonable for what we do in this leather crafting world. So, first things first, the airbrush, uh, your airbrushes are these little doohickeys right here. This is an airbrush. Some of you, and I don't want to insult you and think that you don't know what an airbrush is, but you can pick this up at Harbor Freight for $10.99. $10.99, it comes with one gun, airbrush gun. It comes with four bottles, uh, and these are your little bottles here that come with your airbrush spout connector, uh, as well as the hoses. Now, the only thing extra that you'll probably have to buy is this little spiral looking hose which is, has an adapter because it goes from this small tube to the big tube to where you can get your air in there. Uh, there's no way to connect your airbrush to your compressor uh, automatic so you have to buy these little adapters here. And I, these come in your airbrush kit. You just have to buy the hose and the hose was like $1.99. So all in, you end 12 13 bucks just in your airbrush and your uh, your extra hose. The only thing left now is, I'm gonna move this camera down so you guys can see. I have what we call a hot dog compressor. Now you can get a hot dog compressor or a pancake compressor, whichever one um, will suit your needs as far as your real estate in your shop or in your room or houses or what have you. You can get those. now. Your hot dog compressor and the pancake compressor, I was all in $39.99. So all in with just all of your equipment is about $40, $45. Bucks. Good. you done. Now, you don't need any of these big compressors. If you don't have a compressor already, you don't, don't go out and buy one of these big big five horsepower hickey mafloggers and use that. That's really... You can use it in other aspects of whatever you're doing other in, in your lives, but just as far as leather crafting, a small hot dog compressor or a pancake compressor is enough air to give you, to, to allow you to do what we do in this leather crafting business. The only thing about that is they are very, very loud. And you guys will see uh, when they get ready to start spraying these, spraying this little project that I got. And... Uh, it is very noisy. So I'm going to try to mute the sound in the editing of the video, but if I don't, you guys will probably hear just how loud it is. Um, two, another thing is, now it's optional for you to wear a mask, especially when you're spraying the dyes, because that dye is very, you, you got to keep in mind you're spraying this as a mist, and it can, uh, if you have a sensitive nose, uh, it can give you a headache. But a little bit of ventilation, and you're good to go. So no problem on that, um, as well as knowing what you're going to do with your project before you start airbrushing. Now me, when I airbrush, I only do it on one or two projects or try to accomplish one or two goals. Now, uh, my larger projects, purses, Bible covers, uh, anything that's larger than six inches, um, I'm going to say all the way around, six by six, because I want to save on dye and I want to save um, 
basically on, I, I want to pull the work. I want you to be able to see the tooling work uh, through the piece or the project that I'm working on. Two, uh, with the airbrushing, you're getting the same effect as if you were resisting. So on larger pieces, I use the airbrush to save on my resisting agent, whether I'm using Leet Lac, Top Coat, Tan Coat, um, Resoline, or Super Sheen. I don't have to use a lot of that in the airbrush system because it's spraying such a wide uh, um a, a, a wide pattern on there. I, I don't have to use as much as if I'm using it on a brush uh, with a paintbrush. And then it's it's not just souped up into that brush. So you, if you if you've ever did any type of resistance work, you know either with the dauber or the paintbrushes, you know it that those brushes and the daubers can absorb a lot of your resistant agent. Now, as well as you can control it. I can control it a lot better with the airbrush. And two, um, another reason it saves it saves on my on my resistant agent and it saves on my antiquing gel because I'm getting that same pattern. Another re reason why I love to use the airbrush is I do it a lot when I'm doing two tone work. So now some people might call it a different name, but here. Uh, in Premier, Premier Leather Crafters, if I'm looking for, I want my border to be dark and I want to fade it to a light color so you can focus on the artwork. That's why another reason why I use my airbrush. Now you can control your airbrush spray pattern with this little uh, turning knob here on the end. You can uh, adjust it to where it'll spray wide or you can adjust it and pull your brush push your brush tip out a little bit and it'll spray as fine as a pencil line or maybe a little wider than a pencil line. But if I'm doing a border, if I want to just spray that border without going into my pattern or my stamping work, then this allows me to do that just by adjusting that. And you can test that uh, just by spraying off on a board. Now what I use, I just took a regular old box and I tore the box apart and just stretched it out. Now this one I've been using it for a while and it's about time for me to renew and get another one. But utilize the properties or the things that you already have free access to. Cardboard box, you can find these all day at an ABC store or any type of moving company. And I just nailed it to the door and that's what I use to spray my projects and pieces on. So now I'm gonna turn this air compressor on so it's gonna be quiet, it's gonna be quite a little bit noisy, but I'm going to pause the video, let my tank fill up, and then I'll get right back. And what I'm going to do, what I'm doing here to this project here is just a regular belt. Uh, I tooled it with the basket weave pattern. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to spray the outside of the belt in this dark brown. And I want that interior part of the belt so you can focus on the stamping and the tooling work. I'm just going to leave this as a light brown. The great part, of, another great attribute of airbrushing is you don't have to use two different colors. You can use the same color by simply just pulling pulling back away from it. And I'll show you guys when I start spraying it. I'm going to probably hold an airbrush right, right about here to get a nice even color. And then I'll move it in and darken it up around my edges. And that way it'll give it that nice dark to the light fade into the belt. And you can use that on any piece. I use it on a lot of pieces, especially like this hat, for instance. Before I put the leather bill on, I would have sprayed the outside, sprayed the entire piece one uniform color, and then move my brush in just to focus on that part right there. And of course, I would have sprayed it black to match the hat. And you can use that with all different dyes, stains, or uh, <clears throat> even paint. So if you're gonna use your paint, of course you know you have to water that down a little bit in order to get it to flow through your, your brush tip. So I'm gonna pause the video right here at the nine minute mark, nine and a half, and then let my tank fill up. And I, I promise I won't hold you guys long just to show you just a basic technique. So stand by, let me fill the tank up. We'll be right back. All right, and we're back. So let's go ahead and turn the uh, air compressor back on so we can get enough air pressure. Here. Now, 
I won't be able to talk a lot because this thing is so loud, but you guys, I really want you to just see how I'm going to be spraying this. So I'm going to move the camera over a little bit to give you guys a little better angle, and I'm going to try to step to the side so you can actually see what's happening and going on. So let's get to work. <laughs> you guys can see actually just spraying that and that's kind of hard for me to do it on the side maybe I should have came from this way and pushed the camera that way so you guys could have see it but you can see how the outside is a dark border um, a little bit darker than the, the rest of the belt but I want the attention to be drawn on the inside of it and this is what airbrushing does it allowed me to spray the outside darker and left that middle part just a nice uniform lighter color now I'm gonna go ahead and finish this up and you'll still do your edges and everything the traditional way but it just allows you to come with a different effect on your pieces now before the power of airbrushing was available to a lot of crafters you generally would have took uh, use one you would have used uh, a dauber to do that and you would have stained this um, a light brown or medium brown or even just left it natural or resisted this inside part from the border and then once you did that which would have um, you guys know from the other previous videos in resisting you got to use three coats which is three days one day to completely dry uh, for each coat and then I would have came back uh, without resisting the outside then I would have came back with my dark brown and uh, antique the whole entire belt and then came back and wiped it off so basically instead of going through three days of resisting this is all done in just one day with the airbrush and you still can see and focus on the interior stamping and the artwork in this belt now all we got to do is go back and buff this out to a gloss and uh, go ahead and put my backside piece on and then uh, finish the edges and get all of that done, buff it out. So the airbrush can speed your work up. It will speed you up at least three days because you don't have to resist. Now, once this is all completely done, because I only done the top part, but once this all is completely done and buffed out to a nice little shine, then I will come back with my top coat and 
Then I would just go through that process of just putting my top coat on my resiline or my super sheen on there to seal all of that, that colors in there. And then the belt is completely done. So instead of it taking a week to complete one belt, now we've just knocked that down to just three to four days on finishing. So I hope I thank you guys for chilling with me these 15 minutes on the airbrushing and how you can utilize the airbrush into your leather crafting work. I'll come back with some more videos on some different projects about airbrushing just to give you guys a different effect. And we'll also even use it in a couple of projects to where uh, I'll go in and show you how to use it with the paint, you know, incorporating it with the paint. You do just have to water it down a little bit and probably, and not probably, but you will have to use a little bit more coats on there because you're spraying on leather and as opposed to material such as a shirt or, or anything like that. Hey, this is the Leather Cowboy right here at Premier Leather Crafters in the Dirty South. Thank you, Michael Mays Sr. for your question, and I hope that got you a, a little bit further down the road with uh, using the airbrush and how to use your airbrushing machine um, into your leather crafting work. You guys, don't forget, hit the subscription button, uh, the little bell, also tap that little bell so every time I do one of these videos, you'll get a notification to say, hey, Cowboy done did us another tip. Thank you guys for chilling with me. As always, thank you for the love and support. Keep crafting, keep practicing and doing what you do, and just keep getting better with it. It's a lifetime in this leather crafting world. See you guys on the other side. Peace.